What is going on guys? I thank you all for joining me and I want to start this off by saying I greatly appreciate all the support you guys have shown so far. I wouldn't be here without you guys. It's only been a few short months and I'm already coming up on 2,000 subscribers. So a huge thank you to everybody who supported me so far. And to those of you that are just now checking me out, uh, be sure to check out the other videos I have on my channel. I kind of go into a little more depth than pretty much anybody else out there. Uh, yeah, they can be long-winded. Some can be boring, but you know what? There's a ton to learn. So I thank you all for joining me, and let's get started. What we're going to be going over today is how to tie the Alberto knot, but this isn't just another Me Too video. What I'm going to show you is a slight variation on the Alberto knot that I've been tying for about 10 plus years. Only reason why I'm doing this video is because I haven't really seen much out there that really shows it and the benefits are real. So hang tight and let's break it down. Now before we get started, I just want to address two simple things. Uh, the most important and most critical part of tying any kind of knot, whether it's a main line to a leader or main line to top shot or a terminal knot, is A, practice makes perfect, and B, cinch your knots tightly. I can't emphasize that enough. If you're tying a knot and you're not stressing that knot before you fish it, you do run the risk of having that join fail. If you look here, the knot on the left, while it looks good, isn't cinched down 100%, while the knot on the right is. Something I just want to bring up, not many people really focus on that when they do these tutorial videos. I just want to make it perfectly clear, practice makes perfect, and cinching the knot down tightly and stressing that knot prior to making your first cast with it to ensure that the knot is stacked properly and wrapped properly and secured properly. All right, that being said, now, let's get started. All right, now starting off, I'm going to be using Daiwa's 50 pound test J Braid X8 to simulate my main line, and I'm going to be using Berkeley's 80 pound test Big Game to simulate the leader. Now, many of us use what are called wrist spools, spools that look like this. I'm a big fan of the suffix leader material, it's cheap, strong, abrasion resistant, does a great job. But a lot of us will leave this wrist spool in our surf bag, we'll leave it on the boat, throw it in the bed of the truck or in the back of the car. And a lot of times it'll soften up, whether it's from moisture that never dried out or humidity or just heat exposure over time, it'll soften up and it could get kinky and coily. So what I recommend when you're starting off with the leader, give it a good tug under tension to try to get some of those, that waviness out of it, get maybe some of that standing salt that may have you know, been left behind after your plug bag dried out. So definitely give it a good wipe down and do the same thing with the main line itself. Always take your braid, pinch it between your thumbnail and your pointer finger. Do that a couple times to get any twist out, any salt deposits or debris out. And also it, on some waxy lines, it's beneficial to do this to get that annoying waxy coating that is just there to make the line stiff when it's new and quiet through the guides. Once you've done that, You've prepped the leader and the mono, only takes a second or two. Take your leader material, fold it over, and to start out, if you're new to the knot, give yourself about six inches of, of doubled line to work with. So you're folding it over and give it a little pinch. You want to kind of kink the line right here. And kinking the line is a little bit more important with the heavier leader material than it is for the lighter stuff because what ends up happening is when you kink that leader material, it kind of helps keep the two lines parallel to each other instead of twisting and crossing as you're wrapping the, the, the braid back. Now we're ready to start tying the knot. So for this example, I'm going to start by taking the braid's tag end and pushing it up from underneath at the bottom of that loop. Once I have about you know 10 or 12 inches of, of braid through this double length of a line, I'm going to go take my right hand and give it a pinch. See, so I kind of pinched it and trapped it right there. 
what I did was I'm now giving myself a little bit of tension so I can kind of pull in the braid, work with the braid, and keep it from pulling in more line. What I'm going to do now is take that braid and wrap it down and back up. Down and back up. Down, back up. And as you learn how to tie this knot with efficiency, you'll be able to just hold it like this and kind of flick it with your thumb. Flick it with your thumb. Flick it with your thumb. And the rule of thumb here, you know, speaking of thumbs, is to go seven wraps. That's the bare minimum that you'll want to get when you're tying this knot. If you can go eight, go eight. If you can go nine, go nine. But you want a minimum seven turns. Once you get those turns and those wraps, take the pointer finger and you're going to kind of pinch the braid, the two legs of the mono together like that, and you're going to lean it back up. And now what you're going to do now is you're going to start wrapping back up with that braid tag end in between each one of the gaps that was created when you made the initial wraps. As you can see, it's very simple. There really isn't much of a learning curve to this knot. Now, here we are. This is where 90% of the tutorials in this knot tell you to now cinch it down. I'm going to tell you to make one simple modification, and that's to take that tag in again and just bring it back through the same way you just went. And now do it one more time. So instead of taking that tag and following the main line back through that loop once, you're going to do it a total of three times. So two more times after that first time. What you're going to do now, again, this is 80 pound test, so it's a little bit stiff. Sometimes it's tough to work with. You're going to take it, and you're going to kind of work it back up towards that, that pinched end. And once it gets a little too tight to go, we're going to take a wrap on the main line of the braid. We're going to take a wrap or two on the leader. And just pulling on the main line, we're going to cinch it up nice and tight. Now, like I've stated before in some of my previous videos, the last thing I want to do is cut my hand trying to really cinch down a knot on the table. I'm going to glove up. All right, now that I'm gloved up, I'm going to cinch that knot down nice and tight. You can see it change colors as I pull. And that is a fully cinched down improved Alberto knot. Now, why is it improved? What did I do differently than anybody else? And why are those extra wraps through that loop with the tag end important? Basically, what wrapping that tag through again two additional times allows you to do, it allows you to take your cutter and literally cut the tag off completely. See, there's literally no focus. There's literally no tag end left of that braid. So you're going from main line directly to the leader. Does it necessarily make the knot stronger? The only time it makes that knot stronger is if you're not able to cinch it down 100%. Because if you just cinched it down hand tight, which you can do on lighter line when you're dealing with 80 pound test, it gets a little tricky. You really gotta put some tension on it. If you're tying it with heavy leader material, heavy braid, and you're not really getting it cinched down super tight, there is the possibility that it can kind of want to creep. That tag end, as it hits the guides, it'll get all fluffy like this. And there's a possibility that it could creep back out if it's not cinched super tight. By wrenching this knot down, and by having those extra wraps around that second leg of, of, of leader material, you're essentially almost cheating. 
All right, now, if you are already familiar with the Alberto knot and you've been tying it for years, you just haven't done this, the, this variation of it, uh, you guys are pretty much done. You guys know what you're doing. But if you are new to the Alberto and you've been a Uni to Uni guy or an Albright guy, uh, this you might want to check out. Because what I'm going to show you are three different knots that are various degrees of not perfect knots. And the one in the middle, this is the one I see YouTubers tie and tell you how to tie all the time. And it just doesn't come down to just the Alberto knot either. I see guys that do FG knot tutorials, Uni to Uni knot tutorials with heavy line and light line. And I don't know if they're afraid to clip their line like they think something bad's going to happen, but they leave that giant tag end. Now, if you know what a blow-by knot is, don't confuse the blow-by knot with why Fuji started marketing K-frame guides. The blow-by knot is when your braid and leader go through that first guide. When the knot hits a guide, it slows down, and that braid coming off the reel, since you slingshotted that line off the reel, goes past that front guide and catches on that tag end. And it will literally, you can see how I just kind of caught a couple fibers of the line right there. See how I kind of split the braid? And then when it yanks it to a complete stop because it wrapped on the guide, when you finally get that tangle out, this is what this is the mess that you're left with. This, ladies and gentlemen, is why you must cut your tags as flush as possible, especially on the leader end. Keep that in mind. So this is bad knot number one. This is like the YouTube special. But anyway, this is questionable knot number two. It was a good knot. It was cinched down by hand. It just wasn't cinched down all that tight. And again, long tag end. You get, I hate tags. I hate long tags, especially if they're exposed. Guys, trim your leader tags. Find out what knots you can tie that don't have tag ends. Tag ends cause headaches, plain and simple. Now, we have one last knot, which is this one here. This is the knot that you guys are probably gonna end up with a few times if you're trying to do this on heavy leader material. What causes this is you tried cinching the knot up too early. So if you grabbed the tag and the main line and started pulling them tight and cinching them up tight too early, you would end up with a knot that kind of grabbed in the back too early, cinched down in the back, and never came all the way up. So you have that big gap at the top of the knot. A lot of guys will fish that knot the way it is. It may or may not hold for a little while. It's not a knot that's going to hold under load, especially after that leader material softens after being submerged. Before you get your knot to the point, or I should say before you cinch that knot up tight, if you remember when I was showing, you might have to kind of, kind of manipulate that knot to get it to go up a little bit higher before you wrench on it. That's how you can prevent this, this top dry or this, this not evenly distributed knot from occurring. And again, this is a properly tied Alberto knot. And so is that. Now, for fun, just so you guys know that this works on pretty much every pound test, braid to mono or braid to fluoro, that is 10 pound test Maxima braid. This stuff here. And this is eight pound test ancient cigar leader material fluorocarbon. And you can see how the difference between 50 pound braid and 80 pound mono is compared to 10 pound braid and eight pound fluoro. It is much, much smaller. So you tell me guys, uh, are you already using the Alberto knot? And if so, are you willing to give this method a try? Uh, I highly suggest that you do. Uh, if it was a waste of time, I wouldn't use it. If it was detrimental to the strength of the knot, if it was any kind of drawback, I wouldn't use it. And again, the Alberto knot, it really is, uh, out of all the easy to tie knots that are strong, I don't think it can be beat. I mean, you can tie this knot in less than 45 seconds, trim it and fish it while you're on the water in pretty much any condition. 
So it really does excel in many situations.